So then it, we're going to talk about the economic sustainability of health systems. Uh, Eric Labbe is going to give us some insights. He's the senior associate director at McKinsey and Company, and he has 15 minutes. Dear Eric, well, can you give us uh, some insight about the economic sustainability of health systems? Well, let me give you a few figures. When we talk about healthcare systems, the weight of the GDP is eight, over 8%. Eight so 75% is supported by public expenditures. But this sustainability point has not increased for the past 50 years. So we have health care expenditures that are growing by one to two points above the GDP in recent years. And so this is the question of sustainability. Are we going to be able to finance this growth of our health care expenditures? And above all, what do we, how do we do this with the generations of today without uh, creating debt for generations of the future? We have this serious deficit. And in many questions, they, in many countries, they don't have this question of a deficit. So what are the determining factors? Well, I think we need to look at the benefits. The first benefits are the health of the, the, health of the population. So we saw that in recent years, the growth of health care expenditures has been correlated with a growth or an increase in the health of the population. Positive outcomes, life expectancy, mortality rates have improved. So we need to see uh, this correlation. Secondly, we have to look at equity, equality. We, you can't focus only on the health of the population, but also equal access to health care. And are we progressing in that respect? But thirdly, we also have the aspect of the economic aspect of health care systems. We know that there, uh, a population in good health develops the uh, GDP better. So there is a link between the good health of the population and the good health of the economy. We also see that a, health, a vibrant health care economy impacts exports. And so we have to take all of this into account. And the last point that I would like to add is efficiency. Efficiency is all of the costs that you add in addition to just the cost of care. So administrative costs, the, the lead times, is the system efficient? So the question of sustainability is, can we have a good balance between the health of the population, equality, economic growth, efficiency, and all of this without asking the future gener generations to pay too much. Now, first of all, we don't have a correlation today, in certain comparable countries anyway, between the amount of expenditure and the quality of health care. So there's a huge variability when you look at one country to the next by pathology. You see differences ranging from a ratio of one to five. So we have to understand what are the costs associated with the value? And that's very important. The second element, as I said, the deficit is not inevitable. We're in a country where we have many uh, public uh, deficits, but we see that our German neighbors, our Dutch neighbors, don't have deficits for three, four, five years. Sometimes they have one, sometimes they have a surplus, but they often reach a balance. So this question of sustainability is something that people can reach. It's not just a dream. We see other European neighbors who've achieved it. And the last element, is, is there a system that's better than another for sustainability? And I would say no. There's no system that's better than another. They all come from different sources in terms of how they were built 30, 40, uh, 50 years ago. But we have uh, many mixed systems in terms of structure. And the real question of sustainability is, if you have a healthcare system in a country, what are the three or four uh, points that will support sustainability, and they're often applied in different countries in different ways. Those are some answers to your first question. Well, your your determining factors are superb, but why doesn't this work? What are the obstacles to this implementation? Well, the obstacles. Let me start with the first ob obstacle, which is linked to the healthcare market, which is not a commercial market. We're in an economic sector but the user is not the, the direct payer. So we don't have this classic market regulation or transparency in terms of quality and transparency in terms of prices. And we have an asymmetrical information because not everyone has the information to take the right decisions. That's inherent to the system. And we'll try to see how we can improve this, this asymmetry. Secondly, we have all of the trends are going in the direction of increasing expenditures. Uh, the population is aging. There are new diseases. Treatment times are longer because life expectancy is longer. So there is a higher demand. We also have 
lifestyles that are generating chronic disease, such as diabetes and heart disease. We also have consumer expectations or patient citizen expectations that are increasing. With an uh, increasing uh, quality of life, people expect a higher quality health care. So all of these trends on the demand side are going upwards. And then we have the same thing on the uh, supply side. There are new treatments, but we need to focus on the result. That we, There are new results, new outcomes better outcomes, but the economic equation is not taken into account with these better outcomes. So how do we adapt? We're having this debate on some of these pharmaceutical treatments that are very expensive for very specific uh, diseases. That is scientific research that can help us find uh, answers as well. But And then the capacity to uh, change medical institutions is, is, is it's difficult. That's a euphemism. It is very difficult to uh, reform medical institutions. The medical sector is difficult, it's complex, it's difficult to, to change, and it takes a long time. So how can we accelerate this transformation? That's going to be a real issue. But the question is, the demand is growing, the supply is growing, and the question of sustainability is, how do I strike the right balance between uh, supply and demand? to guarantee that the financing will uh, support these two trends. Well, Dr. Labaye, now I'm really uh, ill. What are you going to do? Are you going to uh, put cataplasms on me uh, like in the old days, or do you have a really efficient solution to reach sustainability? Well, there are some avenues that we can explore. Uh, yes, I think everyone's looking at these uh, issues. I'd like to... Uh, suggest five, make five, five suggestions for discussion. But first, let me add one thing. We're talking about health care systems and not care systems. We're talking about health care systems. Caring is not only, uh, it also, it depends on the way we live and many, many other aspects. So how do we develop a vision five, 10, 15 years from now that brings everyone around the table to focus on health that's a prerogative before any action can be done to improve uh, sustainability. Now, having said this, let me suggest five things. The first, and I'll come back to one of the points of performance, is how can we have a transparent performance, performance in the sense of outcome with respect to cost? Already in terms of results today, we're at the era of big data, which we've already talked about. We talked about it last year. During this era of big data, we talk, there's a huge variability between caregivers and countries for the same pathology. How can we use big data to help our, improve our comprehension of the outcome? And what is the right product protocol to reach the right outcome and also to be very transparent in terms of costs? So I think there's a huge wealth uh, to explore here. Uh, we need to better understand these links and transparency around these elements will allow the different stakeholders to make the right decisions. So that's the number one. It's not easy because obviously data is fragmented today. There's a question of uh, hidden data. So how can we really uh, have access to all of this data to draw the right conclusions? Because we need to understand this better to make the right decisions. The second is productivity. Productivity. In other words, how do we procure health care? And well, here digital can play a role, new technologies. How do we have a, an end-to-end -end treatment if we combine the data? This means avoiding unnecessary uh, tests, because if, if all of the data is in the same place, you'll avoid unnecessary tests, and will also improve decision making. So there are certain examples, large hospitals, uh, uh, sometimes the Americans concentrate uh, uh, everything in the same center. And you see that you can, if you combine all of this data, this allows you to make a better clinical decision. So not only do you improve the, the cost, but you also improve the medical outcome. So productivity is, is improving the output while reducing the input. You know that's the, the, the word productivity. People hate it in the hospital. That's, that's a... a uh, a curse word in France. People say, I'm not here to be productive in the hospital. But 
I'm working not only in the healthcare sector, but I'm working on other public issues. Productivity means the service that you render with respect to the input. Yes, we agree. But you have to define productivity properly. Do we have a proper idea of the outcome and the associated cost? And then this helps us make a real motivated decision to choose between the two. But you need both. You can't say we're going to reduce the quality to reduce costs. And I say that we have many examples where people can do both. They produce quality health care and reduce the cost. We've seen this in the medical sector. Obviously, you have to do this step by step. You have to prove this first and then implement it. But there are some uh, regional managers, insurance companies in certain countries show that this is possible. This will improve patient treatment while uh, improving this health care end-to-end uh, uh, itinerary. We also need to make sure that we develop different service provider channels who are increasingly specialized. The generalist hospital of the past will continue to exist in one segment. There are many other segments where we need specialized hospitals, specialized care institutions in the neighborhood. We need emergency uh, centers with GPs who treat the emergency problems before people go to the hospital, for example. So we need an increasing level of segmentation to adjust the uh, supply, the cost of the supply to the outcome and to the potential service. And so here we would improve the sustainability of the system. That's my second point, productivity. A third avenue to explore is prevention. People talk about prevention a lot. France, I think, is not too far behind, uh, but it's fundamental if you think about sustainability because prevention means avoiding costs in the future. At our institute, we did two uh, studies on obesity, which represents 30% of the people in the world, 2 to 7% of the healthcare costs, depending on the different countries. Obesity, if we don't do anything, it's going to continue to grow, so that's a problem of sustainability, and yet most of the actions are not these are not uh, treatment actions. These are preventive actions, working on lifestyle, identifying about 40 potential actions, which can be education in the schools, sports activity in schools, the cafeterias in the schools, etc. So here, the important point about prevention is that the actors need to come around the table, and that's not just the healthcare actors, uh, not healthcare. It should be people from uh, the agro-food business, people in the restaurant business, catering business. So we need. To, to work harder on prevention, and this is fundamental for sustainability in the future. When we worked on sustainability, we realized we didn't have all the elements that we need on the link between causes and results. We see that uh, we have to work a lot more on prioritization. We need to continue to work on better understanding, but prevention in a system uh, for it to be sustainable will uh, be quite a radical tool. The fourth avenue to explore is to place the citizen patient, consumer, if you will, uh, in charge of himself. Health is uh, a right, but it's also a duty. So we need to make information available and place the patient in charge of his own health, more responsible for his lifestyle, responsible for his treatments, and also capable of choosing the service providers who are the best suited for his needs. And this means transparent information that will allow us to do this and ensure that this is sustainable. And the last point that I would contribute uh, in terms of financing is incentive. How do we incent the system to be virtuous around all of these elements? So this is rather than incentive on the act, it will be incentive for value. So people are remunerated in terms of the number of acts and the volume of acts. And we're seeing some experiments that have been carried out, or it's even implemented in some uh, areas, some regions. How can we remunerate the service provider based on the results, based on the outcome uh, throughout the healthcare uh, itinerary and in terms of patient outcome? And all of this should lead to striking a better balance between supply and demand, between the cost and the outcome. Associated with these incentives, obviously, there's probably also a limit to freedom. We said this for a patient or a citizen. Perhaps 
the referral doctor is someone who will help the patient uh, guide or orient the patient through the system. Or if we realize through performance analysis or outcome analysis that certain protocols are better than other protocols, perhaps we will have to become a little bit more, uh, these protocols will have to become uh, almost mandatory. So there is an element of standardization based again, of course, on a better comprehension of the outcomes and on the best ratio between uh, quality and cost. So I think with these five elements, we can make progress towards a better sustainability of the system. And one, it's seven, if you gain one point in productivity, that's seven to 10 points in terms of cost. So then you'll be above, we'll be able to improve quality while at the same time increasing healthcare expenditure with, uh, along with the growth of our GDP. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much for this analysis.